Are you ready for the ultimate detox? A liver flush. You, I'm guessing you probably haven't done one before, but even if you have, I have one of the great experts on liver flushing uh, on this podcast today. And I think you want to try it after listening. Adam Parker is my guest and he is on Zestology today. Welcome back to the podcast, all about energy, vitality and motivation. I'm Tony Wrighton, walking around a very sunny, absolutely beautiful Portugal today. Um, I definitely am that friend to my friends who just keeps gloating about the weather at the moment because I know most of my buddies in the UK are suffering right now. And honestly, right now it's probably 20 degrees. I haven't got sun cream on and I'll, I probably will catch quite a tan. That's, that's what the weather's been like the last week or so here. And it does make it easier. I know not everybody has access to great sunlight in the middle of winter and getting outside, but it does make it easier to live a slightly more primal life. For example, I'm just mulling whether I'm gonna go and have a quick dip in the sea after this. That's enough of my gloating anyway. On, on with today's podcast. And it is with a man who is actually gonna be out here next week. Uh, Adam Parker is um, a health optimizer, a uh, biohacker, a real expert in the area of uh, health and nutrition, and especially liver flushes. And that is the bulk of what we talk about today, but some other good stuff as well. And if you've ever thought that you might sort of want to, well, you probably haven't actually thought that you might want to neck a, a pint of olive oil and lemon, <laughs> you might want to after this, um, because the benefits are supposedly unbelievable. And I've not done a liver flush yet, but I, I can tell you I've spent quite a long time Googling it after interviewing Adam. So here is Adam Parker on liver flushes and other stuff on Zestology. Adam, how are you? Tony, great to see you, man. I'm doing really good. I'm doing really good. <laughs> Have you been in the ice bath today? Do you know what? I haven't. And to be fair, it's it's so cold here in London right now. I wouldn't need to do an ice bath. I just go for yeah. a walk. Um, <laughs> but no, I haven't. I haven't done it. I haven't done it in a while, actually. But uh, yeah, very transformational. The ice baths in general, I, I find. I, th I think I was saying to my wife, I want to get the actual, you know, full blown, you know, temperature controlled ice baths. Right. And at the moment, I've, I've just got the old school water in a tub. So it's that's a bit of friction there in terms of doing every morning, but they are so beneficial. When you get into a routine, my goodness, they're so good. Well, I know you're coming out to Portugal next week, so you can get in the sea because it's quite chilly here. So yeah, yeah, for sure. It's a nice little dunk. I, I've actually found that doing the ice baths every day started to almost stress my body's a bit too much, mm. actually. And I really like getting in the sea here because it feels bloody cold when you get in, but actually yeah. the temperature's sort of like 15 degrees or something like that, so yeah. it's not that bad. So mm. we'll have a little dunk when we meet up over here. Yeah, I think that anything, you know, that's health promoting, there's always a Goldilocks effect, right? Yeah. You know, it's, you just want to find your sweet spot. And I love, you're tapping in and feeling, it's probably just pump the brakes on it. I mean, mm. I, I go through similar things with like, coffee enemas or anything like that it's like, like you feel good and, you, and your, your brain is automatically do more 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 but actually you realize you no, know, there's get into a nice cadence where it's just yeah. enough and it, it just gets you know it's that hormesis effect just gives you that bang for buck so yeah yeah, yeah I've, I've never done it consistently every single day um but yeah i like what you're saying it's, it's just finding that sweet spot mm. yeah they say with the vegan diet you feel great for three months and then you know mm. you don't feel so good <laughs> yeah, so you, so yeah you really want with all of these practices you it's sort of like okay you feel great after a week but how do you feel after a year you know yeah and that's why i'm i'm always very hesitant if i, I i'm always trying new things like you know just my mindset i'm forever trying to evolve and you know add new things to my life and to my my clients routines yeah. but now because I've, I've learned if i feel amazing straight out the gate my, mm. my automatically want to be like this is the best thing and now i realize yeah. no, no 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 pump the brakes and let's come back yeah three months time and then i'll make that's a true assessment right so you're right because yeah. people would go vegan and be like this is the best thing ever yeah and most likely because they're redu removing all of the processed garbage but actually let's see how you get on you know, six months down the line. That, so that I've, I've learned that lesson over the years. So now I'm like, if I'm doing something and I'm really excited about it, I'm just, just keep it under wraps for now, you know? Yeah. And then your new dad, 
Do you find that yeah. the sort of bio, because I found that that biohacking mindset sort of helped actually, because especially when our boy was really small, he had the colic and, you know, sometimes he'd be crying for no reason or he'd have bad digestion. Yeah. You think, right. Need to sort this out. What is it? Is it dairy? Is it something else? We've tried everything. I mean, sometimes it worked and sometimes it didn't, but that's just my nature. Do you mm. find that as well? Yeah. So I think there's there's a couple of different ways I can uh, I can answer this. So I think in terms of um, how we approached pregnancy, I think has really benefited us. So we both detoxed uh, a year leading into starting um, to get pregnant. I think that's helped massively mm -hmm. in terms of the labor process and, you know, Jordan, I mean, Jordan's six months, he's not been ill. Um, he got a temperature once and that's an interesting dynamic when your baby first gets a temperature, we're like, oh my God, like, you don't know what to do, um, but he was fine. Uh, so there was that, I think that really helped the whole process. So he's not had any issues with food or anything like that. So that preparation, uh, but then it's, you know, then I, then I think about, me and my wife in terms of how do, cause obviously we're not getting as much sleep and sleep patterns are, they kind of deviate and it's like, right, what am I doing to keep myself topped up? So, you know, you know, we're having, um, liver pate, uh, she legit. Um, so we're, we're, bi we're big on like mineral density, right? Oysters. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I'm tasked with going and doing the shopping. So I'm just buying all of these superfoods in, um, and, all, and all of these random practices that I know are really nourishing. So we've actually been okay. I mean, I, I'm definitely on less sleep, but I, I weirdly am fine. I, I, I'm probably woken up twice in the night and I'm, and then I'm still up at 6am mm. because I want to do, you know, my little morning routine stuff. And I know at that time in the day, they're still both sleeping. So, you know, rather than, you know, we're all up and me like, oh, I'm off to go do my own thing. Like you, you learn, <laughs> you got to carve out time yeah. when uh, you're not, you know, you're not being a burden. Yeah. So yeah, it's, yeah, it, it, I think all the stuff I've learned leading up to it has, has been a blessing. And actually, you know, I, I can see how parents just get blown out and knackered because it, I was thinking, wow, if I didn't have all of this knowledge on food and biohacking, yeah, it might be harder than than it has been. Don't get me wrong; it's it's been challenging, but I feel all of these things we've we've added in have really helped keep our energy consistent. You know. Yeah. Good. Good. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I remember reading Dave Asprey's Better Baby book before we yeah, started yeah, trying, yeah. and then instantly upping my egg intake. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but but all of this stuff sort of really helps, and then when it comes to kids you've got so much less time and so many demands on your energy it's sort of when you need it more actually so so that's i feel great. the analogy I, I i keep giving is before i was a dad i you know i was in second gear just nice and cruise like cruise control i was mm. organized i had my everything going on you know me and my wife were, were optimized as a couple we did our own things yeah now it's like my kind of default is third gear pushing fourth so i'm just yeah. there's just more going on and i yeah. and it's you know for example these silly examples but you know if my wife cooked i would wash up right now it's i'll cook and i'll wash up because she's doing the bait do you see what i'm saying yeah. so there's just yeah. more going on and he's in a higher higher gear all the time but you you adjust really <laughs> yeah. quickly and then it's like it's just it just becomes your norm you know yeah, yeah. that's that's what i find yeah and great if you can come to Portugal for a couple of weeks in the, in yeah, the middle of winter yeah. and enjoy it. It's nice out here at the moment. You'll like it. Get a bit of sun. I can't wait. And and I'll I'll definitely be jumping in the sea. Now you've now you've told me how good it well, is. That, with that, me. What be, we'll do is we'll yeah. go on a hike on the west coast and then we'll go down and have a little dip. It'd be brilliant. Amazing. Yeah, yeah it sounds good. Yeah. And then how in terms of uh, you know, I've never done a liver flush. Mm. I know that is a core component of your business. Now. It's not the only thing you do. There's lots of strings to your bow, but I yeah. thought it'd be really interesting to talk about that because I know that's something you've focused on a lot over the last year. You've spoken about it quite a bit. Mm. Um, should I be scared? Should I be very scared? Yeah. Uh, so liver flushing is, as you said, it's, it's transformational, but I always like to stress it's not the magic bullet because I think culturally we're trained to find this is the thing, right? Mm. And I always say there's no one thing that got you unwell and there's no one thing that's going to get you better. It's a mm. combination of both, right? So getting sick, it's it's EMFs, it's it's chemicals, it's poor nutrition, and then all of a sudden it's like the straw that broke the camel's back. With liver flushing, 
amazing super really really good for you really good for you but it's not the only thing because you and I, know, and I would also say detox is not the only thing you know you can't just detox all day and not um nourish yourself and get sunlight and be with the community there's there's a whole um ecosystem that we need to nurture in terms of health mm. but liver flushing is definitely a really uh the heavy hitter and it, and it moves the needle a lot for people yeah because if you think about you know we know when we think liver we think yeah detox but it does so much more the liver is responsible for over 500 different functions in the body so it's hormone metabolism it's it, a big thing when we think about men and testosterone levels a big part of this decline in testosterone levels there's there's loads there's emfs there's all this sort of stuff but our their livers aren't functioning correctly because it's things like thyroid hormone the conversion of t4 to t3 mm. primarily done in the liver right. uh, your your ability to metabolize your nutrients to store energy the liver does so much and actually when you just bring the liver back online you know, liver flushing isn't healing you. All it's doing is creating the conditions for your liver to do its optimal job, yeah. right? And when you cleanse the liver, just things start switching back on. And when I started my liver flushing journey many years ago, I remember just insane things were happening to me that I couldn't even explain. I remember wow. like looking in the mirror and like, where are my gray hairs? They just all just, they all vanished. It's wow. things like that. And I'm not saying that's for everyone, but I'm just, my yeah. experience. Certain things were happening and I was like, this is bananas. Right. And and I've got so many testimonies from all the clients I've I've worked with that just random things start to to heal that they didn't even think were were issues. They just thought it's a sign of getting old. You know, like, you know, a lot of the female clients, their hair grows back. They're saying they're getting baby hair at the front, right. um, you know, their brow. And it's just loads of crazy things. So yeah, flushing is amazing. And it's a it's one of my core tools that I use. Yeah. And yeah, it it can have some miraculous effects when people get into a good rhythm of doing them because again it's not a one and done toxicity in the liver is like it's like a layer layers of an onion mm, you've got to it? peel it back yeah 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 because because obviously my side project is that i run the histamine intolerance site and, and the instagram mm. and everything else and i think you know that the concept of detox there is really important for a lot of people because ultimately yeah. what what nearly everyone wants to do is initially stop feeling so crap. And then yeah. un after that, work out why they've actually got histamine intolerance. And it's always something else. Mm -hmm. And for me, mm -hmm. it was mold exposure and mycotoxins. And I've, I've been sort of detoxing from that for the last couple of years. And I believe mm -hmm. me, I have to go very, very slowly because I'm a sort of, well, I'm just a, I don't know what happens, but all the toxins just go into my body and I just have a Herxheimer effect if I go too quick. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I'm guessing that this could be good for that sort of thing as well. 100%. So we think about uh, our drainage pathway. So how do toxins uh, leave the body? Mm. So primarily they start in the cell. Yeah. So when we think about heavy metals, love fat tissue. So if we have amalgam fillings, we get them removed uh, by a normal dentist. So not the best thing to do. Yeah. Uh, they will vaporize and end up in the, the fattiest tissue they can find, which is normally the brain. So Toxins, oh, whether that's heavy that's, metals. Oh, that's horrific, isn't it? I know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, just that makes me shudder. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Um, so so generally toxins like to hang out in fat tissue. Mm. So from there, then then they'll then accumulate in in organs. So liver is is an organ of accumulation, the colon. And we can talk about mucoid plaques later if you want. If not, just Google it, ladies yeah. and gents. Um, and then they would move the toxins will move into the lymphatic system. And then, you know, and there's more lymphatics, uh, lymphatic fluid than, than blood, then into the liver and then into down to the colon. So the liver, if the liver is not online, um, that can cause a blockage. And, and especially if the colon is not online and clear and we're having daily bowel movements. Now, how do toxins go from the liver into the colon? They go via bile. Mm. So the, the, the liver produces bile every single day. Again, bile is another, I mean, that bile in itself is such a big topic, mm. but essentially bile helps us digest fats. Um, it, it does so many things, but the primary thing is to um, take through phase one and phase two detox is to take the toxins that the liver has processed, put them in the bile and the bile then lands into our large intestine and then we poop it out. So again, when the liver is sluggish, 
bile flow is sluggish right. and that bile when you have good bile flow it's like the lights switch back on and as yeah. you as you do loads of flushes you begin to have a very intimate relationship with your liver so you know if someone said oh how are you getting on with your spleen? I wouldn't know where my spleen is, right? Because I'm like, I don't know. But now because I've done so many flushes and cleanses, I know exactly where my liver is. I know exactly where my gallbladder is, which mm. stores bile. And you feel when you have good bile flow. And wow. bile flow basically takes the toxins out and it helps with so many different issues. One of them, which your listeners might be aware of, is um, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. SIBO. So on my journey, I had terrible digestion and I, I was doing all the tests and I was blowing into the tubes and, mm. and I, I, I did all the, all the protocols, everything, and nothing worked until I started liver flushing. And the reason is bile literally is like mother nature's detergent. It will go through and just eliminate any bad bugs that shouldn't be there. Wow. So that's how I resolved so many of my issues many wow. years ago through flushing. Again, not yeah. the main, really to stress, it's not the the one and only, but it, it's a massive part yeah. of cleansing. How often do you do it? So now I, I'm maintenance. So I will forever do it. I'll forever flush. I think it's so important in the world we live in with the amount of toxins we're exposed to. So my cadence now is every one to three months. What do we do? Yes, what do we do? Yeah. But just jump on what I was doing when oh, I was yeah, in sorry, my sorry. cleansing yeah, phase. Yeah. I was doing it. The The original protocol says do it every month to six weeks. I was doing it once a week when I was like in the zone, okay. um, which again, you've got to really focus in, but that, that was my journey. Mm. Um, and I wouldn't recommend that unless I consulted with someone. So generally, if anyone's going to try it, stick to the guidelines of the book and the protocol. Interrupting this podcast for one moment to remind you that it is brought to you by my friends at Bioptimizers. I am so pleased to partner with them again, refocusing in January after the madness of the holiday season, which seemed to go on for absolutely months. And as well as focusing on diet, stress and sleep, I'm focusing on supplements as well. And I've been taking their magnesium a lot as things come to an end because, well, it's it helps you fall asleep, stay asleep and wake up refreshed. It doesn't help you go to bed on time. <laughs> but if you can do that bit, it will help you stay asleep. At least it really does for me as well. It is the only full spectrum magnesium supplement with seven unique forms of magnesium that your body can actually use and absorb. I exclusively recommend Magnesium Breakthrough. And, um, you know, if you're struggling to return to your health routine in 2024, I have a lesson to share, and that is focus on the big stuff. Prioritize healthy eating, exercise, stress reduction, and above all, really good quality sleep. And that involves taking a good supplement like Magnesium Breakthrough and then going to bed on time. I can't help you with the second bit, but I can help you with the Magnesium Breakthrough. If you're interested in taking that supplement that I have been talking about for a long time on this podcast, you can head over to bioptimizers.com slash Zestology. That is bioptimizers.com slash Zestology and use the code Zestology10. So it's Zestology10 for 10% off. This podcast is also brought to you by my online program, The Healthy AF Method, the mindset method that transforms your health. And oh, it's been brilliant. It's been so exciting doing this in 2024 because we've got an online community and I speak to a lot of people individually as well because it's on WhatsApp. So people can just slide into my DMs if they've got a question. And it's just been so brilliant refocusing on all of this stuff at the start of 2024. It is the chance to heal, optimize and transform your health with NLP and energy psychology. This is my proven signature health mindset program. And I would love you to come and join me and embark on a transformation in 2024. Head to TonyWrighton.com forward slash healthy if you're interested in taking part. I'd absolutely love to welcome you and again if you use the code zestology10 you can get 10 percent off just by being a listener to zestology just to let you know what we work on in this transformative program it is all about using nlp to transform your health and your life by embarking on a health transformation helping your healing and living the healthy af lifestyle and i think also i would say elevating our health iq it's really, really important that, you know, it's emotionally and mentally what's going on when you think about health affects so much what's going on physically. And if you can start to set and achieve health milestones by using this stuff, that is 
really satisfying. So uh, it's uh, totallywrighton.com slash healthy. Use the code Zestology10 for 10% off that, 10% off the magnesium breakthrough as well. And I'd love you to come and join us in January. Um, this is the time when we all reset and refocus. And I'd love to be a part of that with you. That's it. Back to the show. So what is the liver flush? So to take a step back, where does it come from? So the the original protocol was invented by... Um, a guy called Andreas Moritz. So he was an Ayurvedic practitioner. He was German and he used to live in, um, I think it was um, Greece. And he would notice that when young children would get sick, the grandmothers and the mothers would give them olive oil and lemon juice mm. to help them heal. Mm. And that kind of sparks his imagination. And then eventually he wrote, uh, created a protocol, which, and then wrote the book, The Amazing Liver and Gallbladder Flush. Um, the way I approach uh, the protocol is a bit different because when I've done over a hundred in my time, so mm. you do so much, you, you, you tweak and perfect things, but the general gist of what it's about is the liver gets congested with, um, bile sludge, so sludgy bile, um, these gallstones, and they're actually called intrahepatic gallstones. Mm. Now we think, yeah, gallstones, you know, you, you, they're in the gallbladder, then you have your gallbladder removed. The most most gallstones are actually in the liver. There's two different types. There's there's calcified and non-calcified. So the, the the non-calcified are these intrahepatic. So you wouldn't pick these up on a scan. They're made of bile salts and cholesterol. And basically, why do they build up there? Because we live in a very toxic environment. All of these different chemicals, heavy metals, sprinkle a bit of EMF in there for good effects. When these chemicals land in the liver. Our wiring, our biology is, is like the same as our caveman ancestors. So we don't recognize, we're like, okay, this these chemicals, we don't really know what to do with. So sometimes the body will wrap these toxins and parasites and some other things in the bile salts and the cholesterol for safekeeping because the body is always trying to protect us from bad things. But inadvertently, as it wraps these toxins in these cholesterol salts and bile, it creates these little stones. And over years and over decades, it these stones accumulate in the liver. And as they accumulate, it's it stops the liver functioning at full capacity. And Is that because they're toxic or because they're stones in the liver. Well, there's toxicity in the stones. So actually the the stones are wrapped, they, they wrap the uh the toxin in in the bile salts yeah. and cholesterol. So actually the stones on the surface aren't because they're they're, they're, they're like a storage container. Yeah. But actually they are, if you were to like dissect them and have it, I mean, when you do a flush and you see them and chemical smells and it's, it's, really? you know, oh yeah. Yeah. So if, I, so if I've never done a liver flush, you're saying I've got these stones in me now. 100%. Really? 100%. Wow. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so the, the, these, these stones accumulate over a long period of time. And again, everyone's different because everyone has a different ability to detox why did I become a detox coach? Because I had health issues as a young man. And, you know, when I tested my DNA, turns out I can't detoxify that well. Right. Mm -hmm. So there's all these different what attributes. Be, that, what was the snip? I, I, I literally had, um, I did 23 and me. Yeah. And then I did DNA fit. Then if yeah. you've heard of them and then they give you a really nice infographic Great. and they gave you like this kind of like uh, barometer mm. on how how well can you detox? And I was like flatlined. Right, yeah. <laughs> I was like terrible, terrible. Yeah. yeah. Um. So, but there's I've got the thing I've got the compt, yeah. C O M T snip. Um, my methylation's poor. There's a couple of them there. Um, and actually, also part of my journey was testosterone issues. And I and I've got the uh, I forget it, but I can't metabolize estrogen that well, and all of that stuff. Yeah. So anyway, so back to the the, the flush. So mm. accumulation of stones, and uh, then as I said, liver five hundred different functions. If it's if it's clogged up, it can't do those functions as well. And um, I don't know if you've heard of Doctor Edward Group. He owns uh, it's a brand called Global Healing Solutions. Really, really smart guy. And he he his thoughts are eighty percent of the global population have livers functioning at around 20 to 25% capacity, just because of all of the toxins in the, in the world. So I find that fascinating. So anyway, with the flush itself, what you would do, you would prep for the week, 
Mm. So you're, you're, you're basically prepping with certain supplements. Um, so malic acid, or you can have apple juice or apple cider vinegar to just get bile flow moving and to soften these stones. And then the day, so you do that for six days, the day of the flush, you would, you wouldn't eat any fat or protein because mm. when we eat fat and protein, we stimulate bile flow and we want to conserve as much bile as we can before we do this procedure. So we have a particular type of diet on the day of the flush. Yeah. Um, then we would make sure our colon is clear. So a good e exit um, pathway. So that would require usually doing a water enema. I mean, some people are not are a bit squeamish on it. I say, listen, it's like riding a bike. Once you've done it once, it's like, is that it? But we need to keep the colon clear. Uh, then we would drink in the late afternoon some Epsom salts. Mm. Um, and the reason is that's that's uh, magnesium, which dilates the bile duct. So the bile duct is basically the tube that connects the liver to the small intestine, essentially. So we need to drink that to open up those ducts. So they're nice and relaxed. So as anything starts to leave, uh, it's going to be nice, soft, gentle exit. Um, and then around 9.30, we start to make the, the drink. So what is the drink? Uh, so basically it's 180 ml of freshly squeezed lemon juice or grapefruit juice. So again, that's citric, that's a bitter, which stimulates mm. bile production. And then on top of that, 120 ml, I do 150, but the, the, the official guidelines is 120 ml of olive oil. Mm. You have that in a jar and it separates out because obviously it's it's fat. So you'd, you'd make that. Uh, around 10 o'clock, go upstairs, shake it as hard as you can. And the pro tip is to have a straw. I mean, I've never drunk it without a straw because that would be a pretty tough drink. Mm. But the, the, you shake it up, you drink it as fast as you can, and then you lie down in bed. And that causes a monumental um, stimulation of the <laughs> liver. And because you've you've conserved all that liver all day, yeah, it, it's like the, the, the force of, of the bile moving through out of the liver into into the duodenum and small intestine that kind of suction process pulls these stones along with it Aye. and then in the morning uh so then you go to sleep right and then in the morning you have some more epsom salts to to keep the bile ducts open it's also uh, a diuretic so it makes you go to the loo mm. and then the next morning you feel the need to go to the loo and you'll you'll go to the toilet and you'll look in the bowl and you'll see these beautiful little green gems just floating. Uh, and because they're made of cholesterol, uh, they they float, they're made of fat, they float. Mm -hmm. um, you can also get calcified gallstones, which are normally in the gallbladder. And they're like, and I've had them pass as well. They're like, they're rock solid. Mm. Um, so that's the, the gist of, of the process. It's not, and uncomfortable. it's not uncomfortable in the morning. It's not uncomfortable. No, I mean, you, you have to plan your schedule because you know you, you're going to be pooping a lot and you can't help it yeah. so it's like if, if you if you've got back-to-back -back meetings in the morning i'd probably yeah. do it on a weekend yeah. but it's not uncomfortable if you, if you do it to the letter very relaxing um you know and, and actually when i it's so interesting because i find more of my female clients they're more connected to kind of source energy and emotions right mm. so they'll be like one of my clients, she said, oh, she, I said, how was it? And she went spiritual. And I was like, wow. Because she's like, I just felt so connected to my body. And it was a beautiful, and it was beautiful. And I was like, amazing. For me, I don't get that. For me, I'll get certain memories come up because certain organs hold certain emotions, right? So I'll get random memories from like when I was at school or something. And, you know, so it, it, it's definitely more than just a physical action. Yeah. Um, but, you know, in terms of, you know, no, not painful at all um very relaxing and yeah you feel good for it the next day you just feel like a million bucks like wow you know wow. yeah so the stones come out and then you mm. feel great stones come out um well it, it, it's it's multi-layer tony it's like you see the stones and it's yeah. like there's there's the feel good of stones yeah. are out yeah um and yeah there's, there's like a crisp clear energy that you feel the next day but the, the real magic is in the consistency of doing it mm. along with other detox protocols and then you, you then reflect it and it's having those moments where certain things disappear so it might be and and, and it, it's literally random things it might be an old 
knee injury stops hurting. In my what one wow. thing I used to have, I used to have like dry skin on my fingers. Yeah. At certain times of the year. And I never so my solution was, well, just moisturize them, right? Mm. I could never work it out. I was like, why do I have dry skin? Mm. Uh that cleared up. So again, like random things or oh, my hair got thicker and and darker. You know, there's, there's so many random things that you don't even think are things to heal, right? And you just assume it's just part of getting old. Yeah. But actually, it's just no, the liver's now functioning at full capacity it can process and digest your food better and another big thing is you know i came from like 20 supplements a day mm. you know land which again everything has its place 100 but i can tell you when your liver's congested you're not you're not absorbing their supplements really and I, yeah yeah and now i really like when i take and I, I still do take the odd supplement now it's like you're like whoa i can feel it working now versus because the body can metabolize it better you know wow well listen when you come out to portugal we'll hang out and do a liver flush <laughs> no i'm kidding yeah yeah we'll, have more, we'll have more fun than that i promise <laughs> yeah <laughs> no, it, it's wow. honestly it, it, it's a transformational uh tool and here's the thing it's so accessible right you know you know i've 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 done many it's it's a beautiful thing taking people through the process mm. and seeing the light switch back on but so again people have you know, to work with a coach like you or can they do it on their own no, they can do it on their own. I mean, I actually, I have a, a freebie download where I t tell them the process. Um, so no, not at all. Mm. I, I would say, you know, why would you work with someone, whether it's me or another detox coach? It's There's a lot of questions and roadblocks along the way. If you're doing like a multi-year process of cleansing, which really that that's the reality. It's not, there's no quick fix in life. Yeah. If it took you years to get sick, it's probably gonna take you years to get well. Then it's worth working with someone. But no, I mean, you know, I I didn't. I mean, when I did, when I first did it six seven years ago, just read the book and there was there was there was at the time there was no forums. I was just like read the book and just yeah. see what happens and and wish me luck, you know. So no, the the book's there yeah. and I've got a freebie and you can just Google it and you can you can get the instructions. And then the other the other thing that sprung to mind was a lot of people in the histamine community are very sensitive to different foods based on how much histamine they contain and how much histamine they release yeah. into the body. Mm. And lemon is one of those ones, and a lot of citrus, great for mm. even, even more that can that people can really flare up on. Yeah. So I guess that is something that people would think about. I can see how this could help with detox, but that yeah. would have to be balanced against potentially reacting to the lemon. Yeah, for sure. So the the options given were grapefruit juice and lemon juice. So I would say, you know, pick your poison if poison. if yeah, you know, because yeah. it might be oh, actually, grapefruit juice isn't that bad. Mm. Lemons are are really triggering me. It's mm. the same with, um, you know, some people are sensitive to Epsom salts. Yeah. So then, no problem. There's magnesium citrate or there's oxypad. There's always, you know, there's there's, there's levers to pull. Yeah. If if that's a challenge, some people just don't like um, olive oil, right? So yeah. you could try avocado oil, for example. So there's always different things to play around with. Um, I love olive oil, but in those quantities, neat. I'm not sure, but uh, but honestly, I you've explained yeah. it so well. Uh, you, like, you. It's really it's really fun. I, I'm I'm definitely going to try it, and I'll use yeah. your guide to do that. Yeah, for sure. Brilliant. Here's the here's the thing, Tony. When you do enough of them, you actually crave the olive oil. Mm. And I think it's like our intuitive self that the body, like it's similar to when I first yeah. years ago, when I first went to the farmer's market and I bought like uh, a cow heart, right. And, and these organs and they looked horrendous. I was like, Oh yeah. my goodness. But then you eat them and the body says nourishing. This is good. Yeah. yeah. So then all of a sudden I look at this heart as a beautiful thing. I'm like, yeah. Oh, we're coming. Yeah. I'm going to buy you. Yeah. So yeah. it's yeah. similar to that. The, when the body intuitively realizes this is good for me, you weirdly enjoy it. It's it's crazy. Oh, awesome, mate. Awesome. Well, look, we've got a couple more minutes. So what is one book that you would recommend and one tip for living with more energy? It can be a liver flush or anything else, because I know you're into so much stuff. We've already covered some of it today. But one book, a book and one tip. Okay. So, well, obviously we've talked about the amazing liver and gallbladder flush. So definitely read that book. I mean, it, it's more than just a liver flush book. It's really good. Mm. Um, but I've already mentioned that. So one book I love is uh, the book Deep Nutrition by Kate Shanahan. I think she's amazing. And what she's basically distilled Western A. Price's work into a modern day, this is how to eat. 
Um, so I really love that book and I, I always go back to it even, even today. Uh, so that's one book, uh, that I definitely recommend deep nutrition by Kate Shanahan. Mm. Um, one tip. So I would say, uh, one tip is I've really got into understanding like how the mind works. This is, this is, this is my other passion, like the mental sciences. Mm -hmm. And I would say one tip would be to have a daily practice of either visualization or setting your intention. Um, very, really powerful when done consistently and, and done and compounded over time, mm. really powerful things that can happen just by setting an intention of how you want the day to go or taking five minutes to visualize either how you want the day to go, or how you want your life to, to, to kind of unfold because the, the subconscious mind is insanely powerful. That's so I, I, I think that's with, with NLP as well. Yeah. It's just a constant yeah. unconscious mind. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And I, and I, that's really been a benefit to me yeah. so much so that when I, you know, I, I coach on detox, but I say, listen, do this stuff. It's really mm -hmm. powerful, you know, because if you, if you, if you're not well, visualize the future you of who you want to be. Right. And, and you, you're drawing yourself to that reality. So yeah, that, that's one tip I would really? say, you know, because I think that has benefit beyond just health. It's, it's everything. Awesome, mate. Great to chat. Um, ideal day, Adam on Instagram. Yes. And your website. Uh, your ideal day.com and I've got the podcast, uh, the ideal day podcast as well. Check it out. But yeah, if you go to ideal day, Adam on, on Instagram, you'll find everything there as well. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. Oh, there'll be liver flushing all over the place after this <laughs> and, uh, I'll see you in Portugal, mate. Yes. <laughs> thank you. So it's been a pleasure, mate. Thanks for coming on. that is it thank you to adam please do check him out he's, oh, he's so good and i really felt inspired by that podcast i thought he explained it really really well and uh, love to know what you think if you do a liver flush yourself i'm still walking around portugal in my hometown here walking up quite a steep hill at the moment so i may sound quite out of breath i'm not that unfit honest but as you know it's a good excuse for me to do two things at once when i record these podcast intros out and about as well this podcast is brought to you by Bioptimizers and specifically Magnesium Breakthrough. And I've needed a little bit more recently because I've been doing a lot of exercise. I actually log how much exercise I do and uh, I know that my minutes are up for January. <laughs> I'm sad like that. Uh, and when I do, I definitely need a little bit more in the way of nutritional support and that includes Magnesium Breakthrough. So I've been taking a little bit more of that. And um, it's the only magnesium. I I've tried so many over the years. I've tried transdermal magnesium, which I really like. And I definitely recommend it as a sort of different type of magnesium. The only thing about that is that it's a transdermal means you spray it on um, and it leaves you really sticky. And it used to get on our carpet as well in the UK, which I didn't really like. Apart from that, that's good. But this one is better, I think. Seven different types of magnesium, all highly bioavailable and easy to absorb. And I definitely recommend. So you can go to bioptimizers.com slash Zestology. Use the code Zestology10 to get 10% off that is Zestology 10 to get 10% off that is it for this week's podcast next week we are speaking to one of the world's top EMF experts and if you've ever wondered what the Ura ring or the ultra human ring is doing to your hand and your body when the Bluetooth is on then I'm going to ask him that exact question next week if you've ever worn those Wi-Fi enabled headphones or Bluetooth enabled headphones, I'm going to ask him about that as well. Nicholas Pino is on the podcast next week. He's, he's brilliant. He's been on before and he will be on next week on Zestology.